Blog Talk Radio. Hi, welcome to today's episode of 219 Green Connect, where we explore topics about the environment and green living in Northwest Indiana. For past show archives, news, and upcoming events, you can check out our website at 219greenconnect.com or connect with us on Facebook or Twitter. We also have a podcast available on iTunes. And I'm Kathy Sipple. I'm your host. And with me today, I have John Drake, who is from the Illinois Butterfly Monitoring Network. And they are a citizen scientist program that are monitoring the health of our butterfly populations throughout northeastern and central Illinois. And now you've got several monitoring sites in northwest Indiana. So thanks for joining us, Mr. Drake. And Thank what you. what can you tell us about this initiative and just kind of tell us how how did this get started in Northwest Indiana or how did how did the organization get started? Well, thank you, Kathy, for inviting me to your program. And basically, just a little bit of background. I, I work for an organization called the Nature Conservancy, which is an international conservation land protection organization. Um, it has uh, chapters in, all across the state of Indiana. And uh, our local chapter is the Southern Lake Michigan Rim Project, and we focus on uh, preserving and managing uh, the natural areas that are unique to uh, the area just around the southern rim of Lake Michigan. And this includes the high dunes, uh, the Tolston Strand Plain, which is a series of wetlands and ridges that extend south from Lake Michigan and basically reflect uh, the past uh, dune ridges of Lake Michigan when it was much larger. And as Lake Michigan receded, it created this unique, globally unique, actually, um, system of, of ridge and swale. And uh, also there are intermittent wetlands, marshes, fens. Um, we also have a, what we call the oak savanna mosaic, which is on the upland. And this consists primarily of a, a system dominated by black oaks and has a, a prairie component under it. And uh, we are at the eastern extent of uh, the extension of the tall grass prairie. So there is a little bit of a, a tall grass prairie component in, in our area, too. I want to just interject real quick. Um, we did have Shirley Hines Land Trust on yesterday, and they, they have talked about several of those different types of you know, divisions that you, you just mentioned. Do you have information on your own website that would allow listeners to delve down and, and find out more? Yes, we do, and, and okay. I really encourage people who are interested to look at our website. It is www.nature.org, and from there you can choose uh, North America and then the state of Indiana, and this will give you an overview of the program uh, across the state of Indiana. And then you can also look at, at our initiatives here in northwest Indiana, which is, like I said, the Southern Lake Michigan Rim Project. Okay, great. And so now, how did you come to be, you're the regional coordinator for this particular butterfly project? Is that a something that the Nature Conservancy is behind in all of those areas, or how did how did this come to be? Well, my role in the Nature Conservancy, um, I, I work on all the conservation and restoration uh, projects that we do and the day-to-day -day management of the preserves. And one of the things we're interested in in our, our restoration management goals is to find measures uh, which we can gauge success. And uh, one of the ways that you can gauge success in, in ecological management is by doing a monitoring program. And there are different things that you can monitor. You can monitor just the structure of the ecosystem. You can monitor plants or rare plants that are uh, signifiers of health of the ecosystem. Or you can also choose animals. And animals are very hard to monitor. They usually have a pretty long lifespan, and they can be very cryptic or, el or else hard to find. Um, however, some animals, like insects, are very visible and they are a good reflection of the health of the ecosystem because insects are tied very closely uh, in all their life stages to the health of the ecosystem. And then more in particular, butterflies are uh, a very visible, um, good indicator uh, of what you can find in the ecosystem. Um, the butterfly eggs depend on a healthy structure for the ecosystem to, to uh, overwinter and to be safe from predation and, and, and other mortality events. 
the caterpillars or the larvae, they depend on certain host plants, many of which are rare. And are if, if you have a very good, well-managed preserve, um, most of the host plants will be there and the caterpillars will be healthy. And then the adults, of course, uh, depend on different uh, other aspects of structure to, to the ecosystem, including a, a diversity of, of nectar source plants. So butterflies, in a lot of ways, are, are one of the better um, indicators for, for your success in, in ecological management. And in particular, Northwest Indiana hosts, hosts proc approximately about 100 or maybe more uh, species of butterflies. Really? Wow. Yep. That that's surprising to me. I, yeah. I'm a person who gets out there and, you know, does a bit of hiking, and I'm generally, you know, taking pictures and aware. And I, I don't think I've seen probably ten percent. <laughs> well, so that, that's a lot of a, a lot of the butterflies uh, do look similar and can be okay. confusing. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the things that we're finding is that uh, with restoration and continued management of our preserves, uh, we're getting consistently uh, very good numbers, representing many species of butterflies. And in fact, uh, approximately about 40 or so every year are, are reflecting very good numbers. And some of these, of course, are, are rare, threatened, or endangered species, um, including the Carner Blue, which is a flagship species for, for the oak savannas in our area. I hear and about that one all the time, and I don't I don't know that I've ever seen one. I've seen pictures of it, and it just looks beautiful. It's like a brilliant, brilliant royal blue. Is that right? Yes. Uh, the males are a bright blue with a white fringe. Uh, the females are a darker blue, an almost indigo color. Okay. Um, both of them have orange spots on on their wings below when they're closed, but um, only the females' orange spots are visible when the wings are open. Uh, we do have several other blue butterflies, though, in our area. So everyone wants to see a Carner blue, but they're not necessarily going to see one very easily unless they go to the very best habitat that we have. And that would and be the oak savanna? These would be the oak savanna uh, okay. remnants in the west unit of okay. the Indian National Lakeshore and also some of the Nature Conservancy preserves. Okay. And so with this um, monitoring network, you are trying to in engage citizens and, and letting them help you collect data on these butterfly populations? Yes, yes. Okay. It's basically designed for, for people. Uh, there's no, no previous experience required. Uh, it's a learning curve. Uh, what we want is people who are interested in being out there and you know being, being able to take some time, an hour or two, and pick a route that goes through one of the natural areas in, in our region, um, become familiar with the route, and uh, just to start uh, watching butterflies and, re and recording what they see. Um, the Illinois Butterf Butterfly Monitoring Network started in 1987. Um, it had seven sites, uh, primarily around the Chicago region only. And as of 2012, there are 250 plus sites. Um, wow. Yes. All North throughout North. the greater Chicagoland area? Most of them are through the greater Chicagoland area. There are some areas in central Illinois, and then, wow. of course, there, there are the, the nine sites now in northwest Okay. Indiana. Okay. And um, we, we did list some of the details about these volunteer opportunities on the uh, show program. I'm sure they can also get that on the Nature Conservancy site. And yes. Yeah. Also, I believe on there's there's a separate site. I think it's the bfly.org. Is that correct? Yes, that is the website for the Illinois Butterfly Monitoring Network, which okay. has all kinds of information in there. It's a great resource for people, even if they aren't monitors. It's a great resource resource for people because there are images of butterflies there. There there are. Uh, links to other butterfly websites. It basically gives you an overview of the entire program. Um, it really explains things. And then it does also list uh, training workshops and field trips that are coming up. Um, Great. And I, I see that we've got some of them. I'll just, um, by the time some listeners hear this, these, these may be passed. So check the website for, you know, up to date. Is this an ongoing thing that you'll be doing again seasonally, or is this just a one-time one-time program this year? 
Uh, no, the training workshops usually are, are done in the late winter or the early spring before okay. the real monitoring season starts. And okay. this is just so that people can, can become oriented to the program and get ready and think about what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And then towards the end of the uh, – well, actually, the monitoring season starts – in Northwest Indiana, it starts in late May, but the official start date is June 1st, so that people are ready and have a good feel about it, and then they can go out in the field and start collecting data. Okay. But there are three monitoring workshops going to be offered in Northwest Indiana this year. Uh, the first is going to be Saturday, February 9th, and that is going to be at Gibson Woods Nature Preserve in uh, Hammond, Indiana. And the second one is going to be Saturday, February 16th, and that's at the Crown Point Community Library in Crown Point, Indiana. And the third is going to be Saturday, February 23rd, and this is at the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore Visitor Center in Porter, Indiana. Okay, that one's 9.30 to noon? Uh, most of them usually start around 9, 9.30 or 10 o'clock. Okay. okay. So, you know, right now we're having unseasonably warm weather today. This could be different tomorrow. But will these workshops be indoors? Is this a classroom-style type of a learning experience? Or what would what would somebody expect that's attending? Uh, they're very informal. Um, they're indoor workshops. It, it's basically an overview of the program, uh, some basic information on butterfly biology, some information on their behavior and then their ecology, and then most of the workshop itself focuses on an introduction to some of the more common species that that you would that would be visible in north in northwest Indiana. Okay. So it's very good. It's actually more of more designed to be a learning workshop mm -hmm. uh, with the hope that people will be inspired enough to uh look into becoming an actual monitor. Okay. So after they go through this, you know, monitoring uh training for potential monitors, what would they what would they do if they sign on and they're interested in, in helping you collect data? Well, there's a list of sites that are, are available on the website, and also I can help coordinate people in, in Northwest Indiana if they're not familiar with the actual locations. Um, they basically just choose choose a route that they enjoy walking, and then uh, get that route mapped out. There are different ways that they can do that. They can. They can make a uh, print out an aerial map and just just draw on it if they're not really good with computers, or they can use GIS or Google Earth and they can actually digitally um, create their their route on on a uh, whatever a PDF or something like that and uh, uh, just send it in. And then all they need to do is just start learning the butterflies, uh, get get some field guides. Um, check out some online resources, and then start going out in the field. Uh, the only thing that, that they really have to have is just a desire to, to be out there and, and just to help collect data. Um, everyone, when they first start out, all the butterflies are confusing, and, and that's, that's for everyone. Even experts start out that way. And uh, soon you start to learn the differences between different species and different habitats, and, and it's really surprising. Almost everyone who becomes a monitor says that they were really scared when they first went out, that they couldn't identify all those butterflies. And then by the end of the first season, usually all of them are, are, have really gained confidence, and they are really um, supportive and interested in the program and continuing. So we have a pretty good base of people uh, who follow through and, and continue to provide important data to the land managers. Great. I'm kind of wondering, too, because in my in my regular job, I do a lot with uh, technology and social media, and I'm just thinking I am such a shutter bug. I, I hike at the Indiana Dunes quite a lot, and I take pictures. So if, if you can get a photo of a butterfly, is that at all something that is helpful? Yes, it is. Your monitors? Yeah. Okay. The monitoring, uh, there is there is a Yahoo group for the mm -hmm. monitoring program, and most people who have a question with their butterfly, they can just submit a digital image to that, and usually almost everybody in the group will, will help out and help identify the butterfly. Great, uh, great. Digital cameras are a very good uh, resource for, for people. Yeah, I just uh, use my smartphone. <laughs> yeah. I'm usually it, posting it. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, if you have a phone with a good camera, it it helps a lot too. Uh, every time I run into monitors, they always have their phone with them, and they always say, "Hey, John, you know what was this butterfly I saw three weeks ago?" And stuff. Cool. So it's not it's not just me. <laughs> no. Well, I I find that it's a lot of fun. You know, we we go to the dunes. You know, we've got our state park card, and we my husband, my dog, and I go there almost every weekend. Sometimes both days. And I'll just put in a, another plug. It's a free app, so I'm not on the payroll for this or anything. But it's it's an app you can install on your phone that's called Cardio Trainer. And it actually gives you a little um, mapping feature. If you're not familiar, you know, if you want to try a new route or you want to know how many calories you burn while you're doing a good thing and monitoring butterflies, those are generally the two things that I start out with is I, I use it kind of as a pedometer it maps our route, and then I take pictures along the route. So if those are tools that any listeners can incorporate to help with their butterfly monitoring, I'm glad I can yes. share. <laughs> yes, yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah, um, I, I, I unfortunately uh, have, am a holdout from a, a are you? age. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, um, well, it, most of the times what we do is we encourage people to find, uh, find areas that have uh, established trails on them. Okay. Or, it yeah, can be easily easily walked. Yeah, and, and I, I'm not suggesting that I go off trail or anything, but it's just kind of nice as we're walking. Then I get, um, you know, you you can kind of go back and you've got a history of where did I walk that day, and it's it's you know it becomes almost like a scrapbook, and then it's, you've got your pictures that also are tied into that route. So that you know that's how I use it. Um, I don't I don't make any new trails, but it just shows me. You know, uh, at the dunes, we'll typically go on Trail 9, for instance, up at the state park. And, you know, I I know that it's 2.79 miles when we do it. So it's just kind of, um, you know, good feedback. I I try to kind of set a goal for myself, and I enjoy finding out what some of the uh, plant identifications are as well. I don't know an awful lot about that, but by posting it to my social media networks, I have a lot of friends that know, and then they tell me, that's actually an invasive species. <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm taking a picture of it because I think it looks, you know, it looks pretty, but I've learned a lot from, you know, from friends by sharing it that way. Yeah. So, interesting. Uh, with the Yahoo group that you mentioned, is that also documented on your website somewhere, or how would people find that? Yes, it's on there. Um it's all part of the application process. If, if someone wants to become a monitor, they, they submit an application form. They get their contact information. They can they can sign up to the to the um, the listserv for the Yahoo group. And like I said, it, it's just it's a really sim- simple uh, process, really. Um, and it, it does it, it, it can it can seem overwhelming at first for people, like I said previously, but most people work through it all right, and they end up being, you know, excellent contributors. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just the information that, that the people are gathering. It, it's not pure scientific data, but by by any means, but it it does indicate a lot of good things. Um, one of the things that they help with is to establish uh, the ranges uh, for some of the butterflies. Um, sometimes the, the monitors they actually document some of the rare uh, species. And it's just it's good. It's good for camaraderie, and it's good for people to get out there and, and share their interests. Mm-hmm. Well, it seems like it'd be good for a lot of different reasons. Number one, you're active, you're engaging with nature. It seems like the more we pay attention to our outdoor spaces, the more likely we are to protect them, and you know, just kind of notice when things go awry. Uh, so, if they pick a route, how often do you need for them to travel this route in order to make a contribution? Well, it's designed to pick up the, the peak butterfly flight period, which is basically in the high summer. So uh, most of the most of the monitors start the first week of June, and then they're done by the um, first or second week of August. Okay. And, so uh, is it once a week or once a day, or how often do they need to travel that route to report in? Well, we try to divide it up so that the majority of, of the vi- site visits, the minimum number of site visits that that, that we suggest is six. And okay. we'd like to have at least four of those site visits uh, right in the height of the summer. So that's the mm-hmm. month of June and the month of July. Okay. Um, but in northwest Indiana, we have some 
interesting species that we're looking for that are fly earlier in the year. So I always suggest that the Indiana monitors start by the second week of May. And if we have a, a seasonably warm spring, usually by the first week of May. And then we also have some migrants in northwest Indiana that, that we're interested in tracking, and those sometimes fly into September. So there's always the option of, of you know, extending the number of trips that you do. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is, uh, you know, you can go every week, really, during the summer um, and, and do a monitoring route and get good data. Uh, I've done as many as 16 in one season. Mm -hmm. I know some of our monitors uh, do anywhere between 6, I'd say, and 10 on average. Uh, well, we do want people to spread it out over the summer so that they're seeing the different species as they come out. Um, mm -hmm. Because there's a whole different suite of butterflies across the year. It's just like the plants that you see in flower. Um, each week you go out, you're going to see different butterflies as the season progresses. So how long is, is the route that people would choose? Is it just whatever? Well, whatever it, depends, route? it depends on how ambitious they are. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, some, some, some of the monitoring sites are, are pretty uh, elaborate, I want to mm -hmm. say, and uh, it just takes a while to walk those. Gotcha. Uh, some of them can be fairly short. Uh, we like to have people at least spend an hour out in the field, mm -hmm. so we don't want it to be too small. Right. Um, we also are interested more in, in the natural areas of the region rather than okay. say, things like city parks or things like that. Uh, we're actually interested in, in, in some of the National Lakeshore sites, some of the Indiana Division of, of Nature Preserve sites, and, of course, uh, sites that are associated with the, the Nature Conservancy and the local uh, land trusts and Lake County Parks. Is this something that you've seen um, families get into at all? Is there any minimum age? Can can kids maybe be a part of this in conjunction with an well, adult? For for liability reasons, uh, we we like to have the monitors be at least 18 years old. Okay, if they're going to monitor. Uh, there's no no reason why children can't go along with adult monitors. It's just that they can go and observe and go along with the parents and things like that. But they're actually kind of it's kind of more designed for for adults. Okay. Not to say that kids can't go along and learn about butterflies. It's just actually, if the actual monitoring data, uh, we'd like to have that come from. Yeah. Well, very, that kind of makes sense. But I guess in my mind, if we could get people interested at a young age, that would probably be good for the sustainability of this program. <laughs> yeah, and the butterflies too, you know. Actually, um, I, I actually personally know that um, some some people that go out with their with their kids and yeah. In my opinion, I think the the kids are better monitors than the adults in a lot of ways. It's just, well, they're it's curious just and they're yeah, they're paying attention. So, how did you yourself get involved in in this type of work? Is this something you've always been drawn to? Uh, well, I've worked basically in biology and conservation uh, most of my life. Um, when I did start with the Nature Conservancy, I, I had come from the Indian Dunes National Lakeshore where I'd worked on Carnar Blue restoration for, for several years. And as part of my work at the Nature Conservancy, I, I also assisted with uh, continued management for the Carnar Blue. And uh, as part of management for the Carnar Blue, you conduct uh, annual surveys. And uh, I became aware of the, the Illinois Butterfly Monitoring Program uh, through some colleagues. And uh, actually, there would always been the idea that they wanted to extend into some of the high high quality areas in northwest Indiana. And so I think that was probably oh four, twenty oh four. Um I started with two um survey routes that were on Nature Conservancy preserves and the following year um uh one of my coworkers uh started monitoring at Lake County Parks and then several years later um after uh, some of the monitoring workshops were presented, uh, we had some, some interest from, from more people. Uh, there are two monitoring sites now in the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. Uh, there is one at the Indiana Division of Nature Preserves, and there are several in uh, private um, restorations in, in Porter County. 
Good. Well, it's, it sounds like you're the perfect person for this position <laughs> and this role. So, well, that's great. So what I'm going to ask is, uh, if this sounds like an interesting opportunity, please go to one of the web resources that we've mentioned. Uh, there is www.bfly.org, or, John, if you can help me out, um, it's nature.org, and then... How do they get to your specific page? The, the Nature Conservancy website is, yes, it's www.nature.org. And then it, go to where we work, North America, Indiana, and Southern Lake Michigan Rim Project. Okay, great. And do me a favor, if you end up signing up as a volunteer because you've heard it on 209 Green Connect, tell them you, you heard about them on 209 Green Connect. <laughs> Or give us a shout out or visit on um you know, on our Facebook page. It's uh Facebook dot com forward slash two and nine green connect. Just be interesting to know that somebody's hearing this and you're you're moved to uh go go help. We talked uh, again to Shirley Hines Land Trust yesterday and they were talking about a fog excuse me, a frog monitoring program. And it's just interesting to me that we were back to back talking about these these monitoring programs. And there were some similarities because they said that the frogs, um, they're in the wetland areas that they're they're monitoring, and because they partially breathe through their skin, that's a good indicator of the water health. And you know, so we just got a lot of interesting monitoring opportunities out there, and uh, you can do more than one. Get get oh, a yeah. lot of education. <laughs> get healthy. A lot. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Well, I really appreciate you being with us today. Are there any other things you'd like to tell us about that the, uh, the Nature Conservancy is is doing, or anything else you're involved with? Um, no, I mean it's it's an, an organization that it's it's there. It's it's kind of in somewhat in the background, but uh, we are a leader um, in local uh, conservation, and it, it's an organization that allows initiatives and, and things for for people to pursue and. It's a very, very appreciate. I very much appreciate working for the organization and in, in, in all that they do, and it gives me opportunities like this to to help out, bring other people in, uh, introduce them. Uh, it's probably a very about. broad question. We we can certainly have, you know, you come back or anybody from the organization to come back and talk about you know another program. I I see your your name everywhere, and I know there are a lot of initiatives that would take a lot longer than the time we have left. <laughs> Yeah. So, again, if you're just joining us, this is Kathy Sipple, and this is 219 Green Connect. We meet here on a not-quite-regular basis to talk to green leaders around the region that are involved in interesting programs, uh, volunteer opportunities, educational opportunities. And today we've had John Henry Drake, who is the Regional Coordinator for Northwest Indiana, talking about uh, potential monitoring opportunities, educational opportunities for their butterfly monitoring network. So again, you can go to the website and get full details on these opportunities that are coming up starting in a little over a week, uh, February 9th through the 23rd in various locations around Northwest Indiana. So we're going to wrap it up for today. That's all the time we've got left. But I want to thank you once again, John, for being on the show. Oh, you're very welcome. Great. Well, thanks thanks very much, and we'll have you back sometime soon if you're interested. All right. Have a great day.